We have three key messages for this week. One, a global macroeconomics update with a focus on the US Federal Reserve, and we're going to spend a bit more time on that point. Two, an update on currencies, specifically sterling and how our portfolios are positioned. And three, alternative sources of investment returns. Point one, global macroeconomic update with a focus on the Federal Reserve. It's been a good week for global macro, with better than expected readings in the US, the UK and Germany. Most importantly, the US, in terms of non-farm payrolls, came in ahead of expectations at the third beat out of four, and we also saw labor market participation rates at a two and a half year high. In the UK and Germany, we also saw better than expected figures in terms of the service sector and industrial production. Turning to the US for a moment, this week we saw the minutes of the March meeting of the US Federal Reserve. This is important because while we saw a clear consensus to not raise rates in March, looking forward, we don't see a clear consensus in terms of both inflation expectations and broader policy. Keen investors should pay close attention to this in the weeks and months ahead. Point two, currencies, the weakness in sterling and how our portfolios are positioned. It's been a difficult year for the pound sterling. In fact, when measured against a basket of currencies, sterling is down more than 7% year to date. However, as internationally diversified investors, it's important to remember that most of our portfolios have less than 50% exposure to sterling denominated assets, and the amount invested in UK equities and UK gilts is lower still. Point three, alternative sources of investment returns. One of our key investment principles is the idea of intelligent diversification. We're always on the lookout for alternative investments that we can incorporate into portfolios with different risk return profiles, traditional equities and bonds. In the fourth quarter of last year, we spotted an opportunity in European equity dividend futures, which we felt were mispriced. For suitable mandates, we introduced the investment in the fourth quarter, and so far returns have been quite encouraging, up around 6% versus traditional European equities down 3.5%.